coffee with the coaches this week. <laughs> we don't have coffee and we don't have chairs, but we're talking about the foam roller. Uh, I think a lot of people actually have one of these at home. Obviously we have them here. So what's a couple of general things that you would recommend? Uh, just maybe, maybe an upper body thing or maybe a lower body thing yeah. that people could do at home. Yeah, so it's really good for the T-spine, which is basically the, the top part of your back, which is just basically from the mid-back to the bottom of your neck, and then kind of across the shoulders a little bit. So the foam roller can really help in that T-spine area. <laughs> and so uh, whenever you get set for one like this, I'll show it from behind and then I'll show it from the side as well. But <clears throat> basically what you want to do is lean back around the mid-back area, and you can have your hands kind of overhead, or a lot of people like to hug themselves with this one. And what you want to do is keep your belly kind of active and just rock back and forth. So from a side view, mid-back. I'll cross my other arm on the top this time. Keep the belly tight. Rock over and back up. Over and back up. And that can kind of help loosen up those vertebrae a little bit in the top of the back where a lot of people feel really tight. And this is really great for that overhead position when you're getting into that overhead squat, especially, and uh, pull-ups whenever you're opening up on especially like kipping or chest bar pull-ups. And then you can also like work on your lats. I'll show one more upper body one. So the lat muscle runs from kind of the bottom of the spine all the way to the back and actually attaches to the, the top of the arm right here. So you'll notice stuff like this really stretches that out. Well, so this is, this is a typical tight spot. Yeah, that's a very tight spot, especially on males. So this is, yeah. really, this is really beneficial for a lot of males. Um, so this one, what I like to do on the lat is kind of roll back and forth. So to kind of roll that tissue out, I like to go back side to side, side to side. Same thing here, keeping the belly tight and then trying not to just like lay over and just get lax on that roller. So kind of keep up a little bit so that you're, you're putting some, putting a little bit of tension in that muscle, um, giving it some tone. So kind of like you're flexing it slightly while you're working back and forth on it. And that can kind of help break some of that up. This one's kind of hard, but since it's such a big muscle, if you're really tight in that area, you can't notice some change from that one. So going side to side and then going up and down on that lat muscle can really help. But the, the key is to kind of keep bracing the in the abdomen. But the key to both of these would be spending some time there. I mean, uh -huh. if, you're, if you're here for 20 seconds, you're, you're wasting your time. Right, right. <laughs> so you want to be going side to side, up and down, side to side, up and down for probably like five minutes on each side. Maybe five, ten minutes on your tight spots before a workout and you're pretty well good to go. Or before you go to sleep. It can kind of just help I, relax a little bit before you go to sleep. That's what I really like to do at home before as part of my wind down mm -hmm. routine is just kind of using those things up because specifically in my legs you know it keeps me or it kind of keeps away the restless leg center yeah and kind of relax yeah for sure so, for sure and it, it's kind of that um you know a pain the pain is often derived from just a response in our mind because you know if you've ever had if you've ever had an abrupt pain somewhere it's probably because your your mind has sent that signal like oh gotta lock it down and so then all of a sudden it feels really tight whereas you may not be at risk for injury but your mind is like this is kind of funky here you know uh, it feels in danger and so it can kind of cause certain areas of your body to lock up where a foam roller digging into those spots and breathing through those spots that feel kind of painful while you're on it can help relax relax the mind a little bit and let it know that it's okay to relax those tissues yeah. well i know i've got i've got a favorite one that i like to use for the glutes because that's it yeah. This is a very typical tight spot for me. Uh, it is all through this region from, I don't know, squatting, sock, bicycling, all, all types of things. But uh, I will get into that figure four position and follow that same type of thing that you talked about before. It's just like a little micro, try to loosen up one spot and then move down. Try to loosen up that spot and then move down. And I'll try to, I'll try to work my way all the way from the top of the inner knee. Uh, anything that I can feel tender, I'll work my way all the way to the other end of that, uh, just with that little uh, back and forth rocking motion. And that really helps to loosen up my hips, specifically for the, the relaxation at the end of the day. Um, that's really what I use for the lower body. I, 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 my quads are so sensitive that I can't actually do that. <laughs> that right there. Yeah, so on the quads, it can, it can be really painful. 
people, what happens a lot of times is people, they get, they get started on their quads and they're like, they get into it and they're just like, oh, oh, it hurts. And so they just give up at that point. Well, you realize you have, you have an assisting leg over here on the floor still. So rather than just totally giving up, you can assist on that side from that leg and just kind of work your way up and down the quad on the inside, on the middle, on the outside a little bit. So with the quad, same thing here, keep the belly tight, that way you can keep some of that pressure on the quad, and you can just work your way up and down. It, if you need some more, some more pressure on it, just lift that leg a little bit, maybe go down to your elbows, and then you can get some more of your body weight into that quadricep muscle. But this one, really, I mean, you're gonna feel it no matter what, so just keep in mind that you don't wanna just flare off towards the floor, and mesh all the way into it. Whereas your quad isn't quite as affected by your by your abdominal musculature, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter where you place it. It just helps to get a little better angle on it by keeping it braced a little bit as you go into it. Then you can go from side to side on the quad also, just supporting from your elbows. And same thing here, work your way up and down the muscle just to kind of loosen it up. So whenever your quads are feeling especially tight before going to work out, that's a really good one. Starting all the way from the knee, all the way up the leg, side, middle, and on the inside even. So if you would need to get on the inside of your leg, you can kind of take that other one out. This one requires some flexibility, but you can keep it out to the side and still get the inside of the leg a little bit on those adductors. Um, but like Michael said, the glute and the quad area can really be can uh, make some change on the IT band if you feel like you have a tight IT band. Really, those are about the only muscles that can get a really big benefit out of the foam roller because they're big, they cover, they cover a lot of space in the body. You guys ought to let us know in the comments if you have any uh, mobility ideas that you'd like us to talk about, like uh, stretches or anything along these lines, and then maybe we can make that a future video. Yeah, yeah. we've got some good ideas on shoulder stretches <laughs> yeah. all right we'll, uh, we'll call it quits there and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time